got historical price data, volume data, market cap, exchange data, we got derivatives data. I mean, we got so much data, you can't even use it all. Finance family, it's the other brother Adam, Give Bags, and I'm here with a banger. We're gonna be getting crypto fundamental and technical data from the CoinGecko API in Python. And we're gonna be using the Pi CoinGecko library to take care of that. So first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is Google CoinGecko API docs. That's gonna bring up their website here. And if you scroll down, we have the beginning of our documentation. Next, Google Pi CoinGecko docs. That's gonna bring you to GitHub here. And then we're gonna scroll down to start looking at some of these functions. First up, what we wanna do is make sure we pip install your Pi CoinGecko library and then if you want, you can install Plotly as well. I just have some function at the bottom that does a bit of graphing. Next, we're going to import our modules and then we're going to go and create a client and ping the CoinGecko API. Now, if everything works here, it sends you back a JSON response. It's a public API, so there's really not that much configuration or any keys, um, authentication, etc. Next, what we want to do is we want to get a list of coins so that we can know how to refer to the coins by ID when we're making API requests. So you can see here, get coins list is what we're going to be using. And then here in the CoinGecko documentation, we're going to see the coins list. So let's go ahead and run that. We're gonna have a data frame here that's sorts by ID. And we can see here that we have the ID of the coins, the symbol and the name of the coin. Now these queries here, they basically search the data frame by ID and it identifies the name of the coin here. Next, what I did was to create a list of the coin IDs that we're gonna be able to feed into input parameters. And then here we have another function, which is get supported currencies. And we can find that here in our documentation. And then that's gonna give us counter currencies that we can use when we're making the API requests. Okay, so let's take a look there and then bang, we've got a bunch of counter currencies that we can get quotes for crypto using. All right, then we're just gonna quickly make a list of that. And next we're gonna make a simple price request using our get price function. And as you can see here by the docs, we can pass a list of IDs and then we can also pass you know, a list of currencies. But for a simple request, we'll just use one. All right, here we have Bitcoin coin in US dollars, Dopex in US dollars, and Ethereum in US dollars. That was nice and simple. Next, let's make a more complex request here. And we're gonna pass in some additional parameters. We're gonna pass a list of coins, a list of counter currencies, and then include a couple of other parameters. All right, that was a bit messy, but you can see here we have Bitcoin, it's quoted in US dollars, in euros, and in link. And then we have Dopex here in US dollars, euros, and links as well. So if you include a list of coins, it'll return back a list of coins and then if you include a list of counter currencies it'll provide all the counter currencies there all right next function we have here is our git asset platforms we're going to put that all into a data frame we're going to go ahead and sort by id and then we can see in the docs here this is our git asset platform and then let's go ahead and take a look at what that looks like and basically in our name column here that ref returns back to us a bunch of asset platforms bnb smart chain avalanche arbitrum ethereum and a bunch of other asset platforms all right up next we have get token price here and essentially we're just getting the AVAX token price using a contract address from the Binance smart chain and so we need to know what are the asset platforms to go to and then we also need to find a contract address so you can just google search to find these contact addresses so basically we're just passing in the asset platform here the contract address and then our counter currency and you can see that here get token price and then also it takes all of these parameters so you do need to pass the asset platform form and then the contract address as specified here and as you can see in its response here it lists a contract address our counter currency and then our price okay the next function we have here is our get coins categories list and that's going to return back to us a list of coins categories so we ran that right into a data frame and then we can go ahead and search by category id here we have a ton of different categories privacy coins stable coins gambling coins etc so they're grouped by category and then we can go ahead and get specific data by using get coins categories and that's here as well in the documentation it looks like it just lists some market data that goes along with each category so 
IDs, names, market cap, 24 hour change, top three coins, volume, etc. And then of course we can just read that in a data frame. As you see from the docs here, you can specify an order in which to return back your coin categories. So you can do market cap descending here. And then of course this code here is just to sort it by ID instead. So nice and neat here and we can see all the different categories. All right, up next we have Git coins markets. You can find that in the docs here and you can see all the parameters it takes. All right, so we'll start real simple here with just one counter currency and three different coins to get data for. So you can see Bitcoin here, Ethereum here, and then Dopex here. And then this is just gonna be a bunch of different useful data. So this next request uses the same function, but we're gonna add a category and then we're gonna go ahead and order our list. So as you can see here, we have a bunch of different stable coins uh, and they're sorted by descending volume. So also sometimes your requests return back more than a hundred entries. So you can use um, the per page parameter to increase the amount of results per page and then also go through the different pages. And then we've just used a different ordering mechanism here. Now we're getting a little more specific with this request here. We're getting a specific ID and then we're also including some rate of change data. And then the spark line actually, it sends price data back to you as well. And as you can see here, here, it returns back to the rate of change data here at the bottom. And then you can see it also returns this price data for trailing seven days as sparkline data there. And then at the bottom here, we just have some dictionary to data frame functionality. Then you can see all the columns of the data frame right there. Awesome. Next, we have our Git exchanges list and then another dictionary to data frame function there. So you can see Git exchanges list right here. And then we can put how many results per page and we can also page through the results there. Let's go ahead and run that. And then we've sorted our exchanges by 24 hour trading volume in Bitcoin here. So we can see some popular exchanges and then how much volume has been pushed through. And then there's also a bunch of fundamental and technical data on the exchange here. Up next, we have Git exchanges ID name list, and then we're sorting our data frame there as well. You can see this here in the documentation and that returns back to you the ID and the name of the exchange. So if you have to refer to the exchange in an API call, you can use the ID. Up next, we've got get exchanges by ID. You can see that here. And then it takes the ID of the exchange. So how convenient is it that we just did that right on? So here's the keys. And then this will give us some other data about our exchange. We can list out our ticker data, really. So you want to look at that expanded um, in a data frame. So it also just includes the different currencies that are trading on that exchange. So up next, we have get exchanges tickers by ID takes a ton of parameters. You can see it here. And then this is going to be very similar actually to the previous function, but you can get multiple IDs and you can go through multiple pages one by one. I mean, it's just really, it's a ton of data. Uh, up next, we have get exchanges volume chart by ID. You can see that takes the ID and takes a number of days there. So good thing we have our exchange IDs and we're just going to go ahead and put that through and then we're going to check out our exchange volume data. Um, so it looks like this is time stamped and it goes back this amount of days and then just right below that I got some quick code that just allows you to plot out that data you know organizes it into a nice neat data frame and then allows you to plot the volume data on the exchange there convert the dates and all that good stuff all right up next we have get coin ticker by ID and that's gonna return market specific data on each coin by exchange so let's just take a look at that and the code right below it just puts everything into a data frame um, so it's nice and neat so that includes a ton of data by exchange by coin ID that you can look at per exchange. Right on next, we have Gitcoin history by ID. You can pass that, the coin ID, and as well as a date, and you can see that here. And then that just retrieves just some very basic information uh, by ID. And next, we want to take a look at Gitcoin market chart by ID. And we can find that here. So as you can see there, it returns a ton of price, market, and volume data by coin ID. And what you need to know, the granularity of the date is determined by 
how long the request is. So to get hourly data, you wanna use 90 days or less. To get five minute data, you wanna use, I guess, less than one day. So they have the granularity details right here in the documentation. Anything above 90 days is gonna be daily data. All right, next is the Gitcoin market chart range by ID. You can see that here, very similar input parameters. Instead, this time, you can input a from and a to in the form of a timestamp, and then it'll return a range of technical data rather than just a trailing technical data. And as you can see, the columns are the same as the Gitcoin and market chart by ID. And then I've got some code below here that just formats everything and it makes a nice, neat little chart. All right, up next we got Gitcoin OHLC by ID. That's gonna return back candlestick data for us by coin ID against our, our counter currency with a specified date range. So you can see the function here in the docs and then here's the granularity data. So if you want 30 minute candles, just use one to two days. And then if you want four hour candles, you just use below 30 and then you got four day candles for 31 days and beyond. And the code below here just reformats some of the data and then makes a plot we figure. And as you can see here, we have a super sweaty looking chart here from Plotly. Um, and damn, that was super easy. And then one thing I noticed, which is kind of sus here when I was examining the data is the close prices don't run into the next period open prices. In the docs, it says that this function is in beta, but kind of sus, not gonna lie. Up next, we have Gitcoin info from contract address by ID. You can see that here in the docs, and it's gonna take an asset platform ID and then a token contract address. So it looks like we've got AVAX on Binance Smart Chain again here. All right, so that looks like it returns just a ton of data here. Looks like it's got some technical data and some fundamental data. But of course, that's going to be contract address by asset platform. And then it looks like it returns ticker data here. And there's a lot of data inside of that tickers column. All right, up next, we got Gitcoin market chart from contract address by ID. And it's gonna return to us some historical market data. We got price, market cap, and volume. You can see it here in the documentation. And we're gonna need some input parameters here. So we're gonna put the asset platform in. We're gonna put the contract address in and then counter currency and then this is going to return to us the historical price market cap and volume data and then you can just use similar code to this here to print that all out but next i have the gitcoin market chart range from contract address by id i know it's it's insane right so this is just using a range instead of a set look back period from the current time point so we can run that all together and then i'll bring us up a nice little chart of avax there all right, up next we have Git indexes here. Very straightforward, you can see that here. And that's gonna list our market indexes there. And that's gonna give you a limited amount of index data there, just name, ID, market, and last price. All right, up next we have the Git indexes list here and then a dictionary to data frame. And you can see our Git indexes list here. And as you can see here, it returns back a ton of different indexes. Um, I have them by name here. And then once you have all of that information, you can just come over to get indexes by market ID and index ID and return data back based on the market ID and the index ID. Awesome, up next we have get derivatives here. That's gonna return back to us a data frame. And then below that, I just have the list to data frame and you can see here, it has a ton of different columns on the different derivatives that are available. Next, we wanna take a look at Git derivatives exchanges. And then below that again, the list to data frame there, you can find this all here. And as you can see there, it gives you a ton of different data on each of the derivatives exchanges. So I did a little bit of cleanup here and then I have our exchanges ordered by open interest. And of course, if you have more more open interest, you're likely to have higher volume on those exchanges. Awesome, up next we have Git Derivatives Exchange List. You can find that here. And then basically that just gives us a whole bunch of different derivatives exchanges. So now we have Git Derivatives Exchanges by ID. We're gonna pass in the Derivatives Exchange ID here. And then that's gonna print out all of this data about the exchange. Then you can change the parameters just a bit to include all the ticker data for each of the derivatives exchanges. And then I put that data into a data frame and you can kind of just go back through all the data there. As you can see, there's a ton of columns here. Up next, we got the Git exchange rates. And then of course, we're just putting that into a data frame. 
can find that in the docs. So as you can see from the data frame format, all the columns are listed by ID essentially, and then it's all relative to one BTC. So up next we have get search trending. You can see that here in the docs and it returns back to you the top trending coins here by I guess search volume on CoinGecko. So really nothing crazy going on in trending coins, but if you think about how price is correlated to Google search volumes, and that could be useful for some analysis. So next we have the get global function here, which gets you global data across CoinGecko. So you can see the columns here. Next, we have Git Global DeFi data here. Very small data packet gets sent back. And then lastly, we have Git Companies Public Treasury by Coin. Pretty interesting stuff here. It shows all the public companies who are holding Bitcoin. Uh, probably not all of them, but at least gives you some of these larger ones. And then also same thing with Ethereum here. You can see who's holding. So obviously more companies you know, are holding, right? They have all these public mining companies that aren't listed here that are holding Ethereum. Ethereum. So just a little bit of interesting stuff. So there's been a whole lot of data going on. We got historical price data, volume data, market cap, exchange data. We got derivatives data. I mean, we got so much data. You can't even use it all. I hope that was useful for you, fam. Be safe out here in these markets. This is all going to be posted on the GitHub. If you want to support me, you can buy me a coffee. Leave me a like and a comment. Let me know what you think. Fam, you have my blessing. Let's go get these bags.